everyone. I'm Audrey from First Updates Now, here live from the Finger Lakes Regional with Team 5254, current first seed and undefeated. So I'm here with Rory, Sam, and Ren, here to talk more and get behind the bumpers with this robot. So let's talk first about your collector there. Tell us kind of what the process was for that and how special it is. Yeah, so uh, when we started out, the collector was made of metal. Uh, but later in, uh, like in between bag day and now, we actually changed it to be all plastic because um, it was more flexible. So the way this one works is both the top and bottom roller are powered by the same motor. It's a uh, 6 to 1, 7, 7, 5 with this CNC Lexan part. Uh, so, and there's a uh, figurated piece of polycord going down to the bottom roller and a belt going to the top roller. So uh, they both spin in opposite directions. So if the motor spins this way, it's intaking. This way, it's outtaking. Um, then we added this recently to stop balls from coming through the top because that was happening in a couple of matches. Uh, and it has a uh, limit switch to stop the ball. It has a limit switch to know when to stop intaking. That sounds really cool and also really effective. But one of the things that's been getting you the ranking points every single match consistently has been the awesome climber that comes from underneath. So, Sam, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Of course. So, our team opted to go with a four bar mechanism for our climber because we really like the way that it would allow us to integrate. Since we have NEOs on our drivetrain, we have a wider space in between the drivetrain gearboxes, as you can see here. Um, with Sims, that's just not feasible. So. Our four bar extends out of the robot, which we demonstrate with this wooden model. And then we uh, use our drivetrain to pull us the rest of the way onto the, uh, onto the platform. Um, it took a lot of iteration to get this working because it's, it deals with crazy, crazy amounts of force. Um, so we had to go through a bunch of different versions with different materials. You can see the final, uh, the most weight bearing bars are made of steel. And the, um, these were roughed up on a bandsaw, but we have other ones that are um, these plates that are uh, CNC'd as backups. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a limit switch to stop it from pulling itself to pieces if it keeps on trying to actuate. Nice. So let's get a clearer view of the back of the robot and the beak and the gear manipulating mechanism. Or, sorry, the hatch panel manipulating mechanism. So, Ren, can you tell us a little bit more about this? Uh, yes. So this is our hatch mech, and we call it the beak because it kind of looks like a beak when it's closed. Um, so, wow. The panel um, goes on this. Uh, the center of the panel goes through this, and then this plunger pushes these four triangles open, and that holds the panel in place. Um, and how we place is this pushes back out, and this ring comes forward and kicks the ring, the panel, off of our mech. Um, so this is pretty much custom fabrication. Um, we CNC the back panel, the ring, um, the fins, and the plunger plate. Um, and we have two metal gussets here because these fins were bending at one point, um, and we were afraid that they would break um, instead, but yeah. All right, well guys, it seems like an awesome robot. I know you guys are doing really well, so best of luck to you tomorrow on Saturday and for the rest of the competition. First take, it worked, the first take. <laughs>